When I was little, I thought I heard voices talking to me. These voices I heard were my thoughts, my creativity, making sense of the world around me. These voices eventually guided my artistic exploration as they took on the persona of various characters. And it was in this early story building that my eyes were opened to the roles of the protagonist and the antagonist, and that it is a little more nuanced than just the ubiquitous good and evil. What I was doing, unbeknownst to myself, was creating a personal mythology. It was basically a way for me to understand my own values as I formed my worldview. It wasn't until later that I realized my mythologies had some connections with many of the archetypes that, psycho that psychoanalyst Carl Jung established. My grasp on the hero-villain dichotomy grew stronger as I connected them to the idea of the collective unconscious and tethered them to all the other stories I encountered. Storytelling has always been a significant device used in my work and in my artistic practice. I think part of my fascination with demons has to do with my wanting to explore the parts of the human mind that we intentionally keep tucked away because they are too hard to face and are often very disturbing. I connect with this archetype the most because these characters are not like everyone else, much like myself. And an archetype who is a shimmering angel from the heavens or a white knight is unrealistic and, frankly, Boring! <laughs> In a world full of life, I notice the shadows. The shadows are empowering, as if they speak to me and give me the strength to overcome challenges. I feel an affinity to them, like they're on my side. I feel this way because I've noticed what the light does. It overpowers the darkness and casts it away, hiding its potential. In many mythologies, the sun god is depicted as being very arrogant and having sheer brute strength, whilst the god of the underworld, on the other hand, has a more subtle, yet immensely deeper power. Darkness is a natural state. There was once nothing but darkness, and eventually there will be nothing but darkness again. This school year, I turned this reflection towards my image in a series of self-portraits. In these, I explore the relationship between one's outward appearance and their inner layers, their inner struggles, their constructed layers. The way I constructed these self-portraits parallels the way I constructed my personal mythologies. These pieces, in a way, showed me how the protagonist and antagonist exist within myself and within others. Like the layers of paint, you can see the complexity and the depth of both human personality and human experience. Um, Vermont 8, um, um, Vermont. On April 8th, by the way, there's sound in this video, but on April 8th, I traveled to Vermont to a location in the path of totality to film the rare full solar eclipse. This experience was sublime. The impact that the site had on my soul and my perception of the scale of humanity and our place in the universe was forever altered. It wasn't my intention to connect this footage to my previous work. However, the obvious interplay of light and dark 
competing with each other is ever present and not in a subtle way. What emerges in the end is a visual battle between dark and light. Watching the eclipse struck a cathartic chord with me as I witnessed the darkness consume the light and shroud the landscape in darkness as far as the eye can see. In the hours leading up to totality, the air turned cool. At the moment of totality, I watched the moon overtake the sun, and it shrouded everything in silence. In the last three years, my artwork has explored the character of darkness, adding another element to personal mythology in a world where the light is worshipped. I used to feel self-conscious about my infatuation with the darkness and the macabre. But after making all that artwork and putting together this talk, I realized that looking into the things we fear the most has been a process of healthy self-reflection that connects me to the profound realms of the collective unconscious. Thank you.